Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. And welcome to today's Telling Insights keynote and panel discussion powered by CC Webinar Live. And thank you for joining. We would also like to thank Telen for sponsoring today's CC Webinar Live session. Now, I would like to pass on the microphone to Eric to introduce our keynote speaker and later on to moderate the panel. For audience, if you have any questions to our keynote speaker or our panelists, please do use the chat box option throughout this session. That's all from my side. Eric, over to you. Thank you very much, Laura, and uh, uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of you out there. I'm very pleased to uh, to, to to host this uh, the, the CEC webinar. Uh, we're going to talk today about the wholesale industry in a data hungry age and all the challenges and opportunities. So. Um, something to listen to, please. Um, uh, for this, I cannot do it by myself, and I will, I'm very happy to have um, uh, to, to have um, uh, Eddie with me here. I think we will do the, the keynote speak, and uh, and of course Rashid and and Matthias. I'll give them a quick minute to to introduce themselves. So Eddie, maybe over to you. Thank you, Eric. Um, I am is Eddie Siswanto, uh, SVP Network Performance. Uh, actually, I in VP now for one is about ten months. Uh, normally, or most mostly, I spend my time in network planning and development. So, this is a, a new task for me. And, and uh, this, uh, I'm from Telin. Telin is the subsidiary of Telkom Indonesia. Telkom Indonesia is the biggest company in uh, Indonesia. As uh, incumbent, we have uh, about uh, one seventy million mobile subscriber and about 8 million uh, FTTH uh, in the home, or we call it, the, the product is in the home, 8 million FTTH subscriber. And for Telin as the arm of Telcom for the international uh, expansion of Telcom. So we have a uh, cables, uh, submarine cable to Europe, to US or to other ASEAN country. Uh, so we have a data center in Asia, in Singapore, Hong Kong, also in Timor Leste, and of course in domestic in Indonesia. And our product from IP Transit, Voice, and then I2P, and also security and new platform. Also, we, we already delivered the product. Also, thank you, Eric. This is my introduction. Thank you very much, Eddie. And uh, let's go to Rashid. Rashid, welcome. Very much welcome to you, Eric, and to your guests as well. Rashid Al Ali, I'm the Vice President of the International Sales. I look after the data services for Etisalat UAE. I think most of you, they know Etisalat UAE is one of the leading uh, company in the emerging market. We are very much into the uh, wholesale, I mean, enterprise and consumer-based business. We are providing innovation type of service to almost 154 million subscribers as we talk now. It's over than 154 million, over 16 countries in East, Middle East and West side of, uh, uh, I mean, North Africa and the West side of Africa. It is a lot holding a high uh, credit rate uh, financial which allow us to extend our services and innovation and even ambition to keep leading our market with innovation services. And this can be reflected recently in our mission where we are very much into the digital type of services to cope with the, with the trend of the telecommunication and the industry. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Rashid, and again, uh, happy to have you on the uh, on on this panel session. So, um, last but not least, Matthias. Yeah, hello, everybody. Yeah, my name is Matthias Mora. I'm working for Deutsche Telekom uh, for more than twenty years in the wholesale arena, for ten years in the national wholesale, for now since two thousand and seven already in the net in the international wholesale, so kind of a natural born wholesaler in our company. So currently I'm responsible for product management and sales support in the IP business of the international wholesale unit that's called Deutsche Telekom Global Carrier. And I'm based in Bonn uh, in the headquarter of Deutsche Telekom in Germany. Thank you very much and welcome to you as well, uh, Matthias. So guys out there, um, it's a, a nice stack of, uh, of, of people around the table. And, uh, uh, but first, before we go into uh, our interactive uh, discussion, 
and talking about the topic. Um, I would like to invite uh, Eddie Siswanto from, from Telin to, uh, to give us a Telin insight and uh, on the uh, on the business and uh, so eddie you're invited to uh, to to share your uh, your presentation and we're more than happy to listen to you what you have to share with us so please eddie take it away thank you thank you eric and uh, thank everyone join this uh, session here is a uh, topic is wholesale industry and data hungry age challenge and opportunity as my introduction is uh, i am eddie siswanto svp network performance First is uh, introduction brief about Telin. Uh, Telin is uh, the international of the telecom with 11 uh, subsidiary or global office. And we have uh, 58 POP globally with 28 countries and 56 domestic POP. And we have uh, 19 data center uh, in four, four countries, 19 data center in four country so sorry i let me laser pointer better and then the our customer around 250 globally including wholesale and uh, enterprise as i mentioned we uh telling a subsidy of telecom indonesia we have 173 million mobile and at million broadband subscriber or fdth and then our submarine cable is uh going to Europe, US, and Hong Kong, and Japan also, this about 27,000 kilometer. And this, uh, our network is bringing traffic about 14.2 terabit per second. This is growing significant during COVID-19. And this uh, wholesale and market share in Indonesia is about 74% for, for traffic and for network is 60%. This is our awards uh, in 2020. Uh, from uh, Berlin Global Watch, Best Regional Data Center, Cable, and the uh, Best Operator in, of the year. And other uh, awards uh, uh, before. Yeah. Uh, this, let's discuss our topic first about the traffic. The traffic is uh, growing very fast from 2019 to 2020 is 57%. This driven by uh, online and digitalization during COVID-19 and then still growing 50%, 51% to 2021. So our uh, network being uh, about internet 14.2%. And if we see what is the content of traffic, because this is a very good topic to be discussed uh, during panel discussion, I think. Uh, the traffic composition is, uh, if we split to 10 top, uh, SN. Uh, in this 98% traffic is from top 100 ASN. And top 100 ASN is consists of Google, 33%. And Facebook also 33%. And other OTT, 30%. Sorry, Google, 31%. Facebook, 33%. And also other OTT, 33%. From from telco or other tier one is only three percent. So mostly traffic actually from OTT. This this is uh, uh, we need to I think elaborate this uh, this challenge yeah. Because if we see I I make this presentation actually as wholesaler we are as wholesaler we are get getting push from user to have good customer experience. And other hand, we get push from OTT and our CDN player that they always injecting more popular content, more bandwidth or require lower latency like gaming or like uh, or uh, real time communication. So we are as wholesaler, we need to accommodate to uh, uh, end user and to the content. This is uh, our challenging. Can we? Uh, make this is as advantage as advantage for us or actually we just receiving complaint this is this is uh, really i think uh, very interesting to be discussed and then uh, we see the network if if in the network uh, now the content and is closer to closer to end user if uh, maybe before 2015 or actually 2010 maybe like this uh, Connectivity hub or interconnection 
hub is only in major city in the world like Singapore and Singapore or Hong Kong or in Europe maybe Frankfurt or Marseille but no it's uh, they're moving moving to uh, like Indonesia moving to Jakarta there's many many order of transmission or even they build ourselves they build their self the network the cable to Jakarta uh, this is the 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 trend currently and then next is after 5G, I think they move again to closer to end user, maybe in the small city even. So this is uh, also the trend that coming to today. Why they move to closer to user? Because they want to have, of course, uh, performance, good performance. Because if uh, closer to user means uh, latency is uh, better, latency is less, and then the capacity also, they will uh, save cost because they can uh, provide capacity locally because like video or uh, high definition video is uh, need a high uh, capacity high bandwidth so by moving to closer to user they will get the benefit by cost efficiency and this is a very interesting also but I mean higher because they need the content closer to user then OTT on that on cable, even on data center. This this they build themselves the data center and cable, and also the data center also player they they also thanks to build their themselves the cable also. This is this is strategic for us. This uh, uh, as middleman, I see. This is uh, our as wholesaler could be shrinking our role. This is uh, uh, challenging to us. Next, and this is this case, but uh, this is any direct or indirect, but this is I just uh, captured from the news that GTT, GTT is the tier one uh, operator in the world with uh, 700 global POP, POP and then 100 GE uh, core router and also this 140 in the country. So they have big number. But what happened is, uh, uh, this is a bankruptcy. This uh, bankruptcy. But this is the case that how the challenge of wholesaler, oh, the challenge of uh, telco. As this is tier one. What about at tier two or tier three? This is a, a challenge for us. How we can survive in the we can say in the in the OTT world. Next. Uh, Move to opportunity after I uh, mentioned about challenge, then we talk about opportunities. Uh, as mentioned before that the content is moved to the closer to the user. What's mean actually this uh, potentially will be new interconnection hub. This I, I take this uh, actually this from the global peering forum just I think on uh, April by telegraphy. Sorry, I, I, I think I need to put the source here. But anyway, uh, this the, there will be new interconnection hub because the the move of content closer to user. Uh, like in uh, I take a case in Jakarta because this Jakarta is explosive growth and uh, Singapore, Hong Kong, this will be rapid and will be mature. So uh, Singapore, Hong Kong will keep still con interconnection hub, but will be new additional connection hub will be uh, Jakarta is potential for interconnection hub. Uh, that's why because the growth of capacity and there is the uh, OTT is coming to Jakarta uh, like and this is the cloud uh, provider Google Cloud or AWS or NTT already have a footprint in Jakarta and this is will be a challenge but we need to take the opportunities where what one the opportunities like cable because some OTT still need a cable from other uh, operator not not Maybe just all Facebook or Google, then they will cable themselves. But some OTT still uh, need capacity of cable. 
and then data center we have potential also data cent our data center to be occupied by OTT and then uh, Arto internet exchange uh, so cloud solution this is this is uh, the opportunity that we can uh, grab uh, in the in no or next uh, future yeah. uh, then this is uh, actually the response of why what the our response to the OTT because the currently the traffic is do, dominantly uh, from the OTT. Uh, previously, we just get the revenue from the we call it uh, short one or users from just from here from the users. Uh, and we just as the deliver the content from the content provider to the user. We don't get any revenue from the content. But no, we, we know that OTT already consume huge bandwidth and they, they also have profit from the advertising or from the like Netflix, from the membership. And so we need to work together to find the solution, how to get within solution for delivering the traffic from the content that very used traffic to the user. So this is a, a opportunity actually to us to make, to monetize how connection of the OTT. So we, I, I say in the slide, a double side opportunity from this uh, user and from the content. So this is a, a is uh, not easy. Uh, I mean, not easy because uh, not not. This is sometimes difficult to negotiate because we we has experience difficult to negotiate with OTT. And if we do something that uh, we call it reduce the capacity or manage the capacity, then customer experience here will be uh, a complaint from user. So we need to keep balance between monetizing and customer experience. And this is the, the art of this uh, two side, double sides opportunity. I think. Uh, so I think everyone has uh, approached for this this one to how to get the. Uh, better win-win solution to OTT and uh, to us uh, as wholesaler. Uh, next, the transformation. Uh, this is uh, my last slide. The transformation is, uh, this is, I take from uh, Freshwater House Cooper, that uh, the telco has to be moved from network-centric to service-centric and to end proposition. Uh, I think everyone already understand what this uh, transformation and all telco, I think, move to this uh, journey from the network centric to the central cent service centric. And this uh, from only infrastructure to uh, software to and also from only physical, from middleware, from only service APLC or connectivity to even to consulting. And this is uh, how we transform our telco uh, in the current situation and in the when the OTT already uh, we can say occupy our traffic. Okay, that's all my presentation. Thanks for the attention, everyone. Back to Eric, please. Thank you, Eddie, and thank you for 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 sharing the talent insight on uh, on uh, uh, on the on the wholesale industry in this uh, in the in this data hungry age. Um, uh, a question which popped up, and that's actually from 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 your last slide because you were mentioning that 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 uh, you know. Uh, Price what our scoopers tells us as, as a consultant in there and who oversees the uh, the, the telco industry that that we're moving from a network centric uh, to 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 uh, let's say a more service centric um, uh, um, uh, environment. So uh, how did how did how did um, uh, uh, Telen and, and the whole group uh, uh, let's say um, uh, move into this transformation? Can, can you give us an example? Yeah, uh, thank you, Eric, for the question. First, uh, we move our connectivity to have uh, more advanced like uh, auto 
or self uh, service by customer or uh, free we call it free bandwidth so they they can uh, order by by self and then they can upgrade or downgrade the service this uh, one thing from the, our traditional uh, connectivity yeah. we we add the feature of the connectivity uh, so we add the connectivity not just uh, point to point we add connectivity to the cloud maybe we already have connectivity to google or to aws so customer can uh, end to end order to tell in connectivity and cloud and this is our basic service and then for the uh, new platform we also try to adding the capacity or capability our platform as security by invest by self on the basic like it on the uh, layer three security and also we can partnering with other from the layer four layer seven security and uh, we maybe also we we try to what you say what to develop our security to more advanced uh, to customer and also for for the traffic base for the traffic base uh, like a 2 p or voice this is actually still our core business also this is our legacy yeah. so we need to uh, improve also our legacy revenue even uh, not easy but we try using like marketplace uh, we, we move to marketplace and we, we call it new traffic this already live here you know, new new traffic so people can uh, join the new traffic and they can uh, by prepaid they can send the traffic at 2p to uh, that already register in the traffic or to tell in and tell in to our uh, telecom tell our partner in indonesia this is uh, what telling done for the moving from network centric to service centric Okay, th thank you, Eddie. Um, uh, I, I see some questions coming in from from uh, in the chat box from uh, from from you all out there. So thank you very much, and keep let, let those uh, questions uh, keep on coming, uh, guys. Um, and it, and it's more about the, the stability of the user RPU and and the wholesale customer RPU. So. Um, um, uh, is it right to 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 say actually and thank you ian for for, for your question um, um about uh, the the balance b b between the um, uh, the wholesale versus uh, retail um and uh, and and uh, monetizing versus uh, let's say the user experience what would be your um uh, what would be your take on this one yeah uh, we have so tough experience actually for balancing this uh, uh, between monetizing and user experience if we see if we difficult to negotiate with the ott then uh, for easy we just cut the uh, connection but this user is complain and so many user complain so we cannot do like this so uh, this uh, balance so we we do like what is this way we patient or maybe we, we reduce slowly by slowly the capacity and what the complaint from user and then we negotiate again with ott so take really time and take the our passion also and to to get this this opportunity so i for for i think if if yeah if in case uh, telco can uh, you need unify yeah <laughs> so we can we can do together but but if not because our competitor is uh they could they have good experience if we we con we disconnect to the ott and then our competitor have good experience to the OTT, that that content so we lost competition in the user so this is really challenging but not easy and but we uh, i think we must do it thank you eric Thank you, th th thank you, Eddie. No, no, of course, it's always for finding the right balance between yeah. uh, b b between them, and it's it's not always easy. And uh, yeah, you need to be uh, you be on top of it. So thank you, Eddie, and thank you very much for for sharing your presentations and and those uh, those uh, ad hoc uh, questions and answers from 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 you. So thank you very much. And with this, ladies and gentlemen, I will I would like to um, uh, would like to invite uh, Rashid from uh, from Eti Salat. And Matthias from uh, from from uh, Deutsche Telekom um, uh, to the bridge as well. So, gentlemen, uh, welcome again. Hello. 
Hi, Tom. Okay. Hello, Rashid. And um, uh, let, let me get right into it. Let, let me get, uh, immediately get into it. Maybe Rashid, a, a question to you. Um, uh, what do you think do, do the current networks and, and, and new solution actually bring to the table uh, to, to address the future uh, internet demand? What, 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 do, what do we see around us? Well, uh, Eric, uh, first of all, I would like to thank Eddie for the nice presentation that uh, I believe it reflects uh, the same that most of us are facing. Uh, going back to your question, I think uh, the telecommunication was trying for long for a right venue and take off to the new solution, to the new era of the services and level kind of solutions. And it seems the pandemic was, uh, I mean, although it was really bad pandemic to all of us, but one of the good things that happened during 2020 with the pandemic, it's take off, taking off of all what was most of us waiting for it, not only as a provider, but even the, the, the customer or the users and all aspect. Uh, the, the pandemic, it seems it's escalated the matter to reach to a level where the cloud service solutions is the only thing that every single telecom or uh, app application providers or service providers is looking at. So I think with what is happening, there is a lot of changes happening in the market in terms of uh, transformation. And the two main things that Eddie was mentioning, it's really a concern, is the ARPU kind of financial aspect and the, the balancing of monetizing the services compared to, uh, to, uh, to the customer uh, maintaining the balance between the monetizing the infrastructure with the customer experience. So I think there is a lot of changes happening and uh, the change is happening so fast. I mean, uh, we, we were looking at a lot of aspects that it might take three to five years time to be reflected in the real life and the real networks. But what happens with the pandemic, we saw a lot of those three uh, five years aspect just reflected at the, at the last quarter of uh, 2020. And we are now in a stage where we are enhancing those things. So uh, uh, if I go back to your question, Eric, very much, there is a lot of changes happening. There is a lot of services that was in a slow motion mood of takeoff that we can see it is accelerating very well. And in the network side, as Eddie was mentioning, I mean, we've been very much focusing in layer one, layer two, layer three. Now, all the discussion internally within the organization or the, with the customers, it's about layer seven and above. It's about solution, Turkey solution, about the service. Uh, and we don't see kind of uh, standardized. It is more about how we adapt to be able to cater those kind of requirements. It's no more about my, my services available in the shell and drive through kind of requirements coming to pick up one of those services. We are more in a deep kind of discussion about a very kind of particular requirement related to, to customers. And here I'm not only reflecting wholesale as I'm very much uh, close to the market. I see this in the enterprise wholesale, uh, SMBs, SMBs becoming a, a big layer with a lot of requirements and the quantity, the business scale, uh, it's driving the market in a very new era as well. So I'll, I'll cut it short here, Eric, uh, but, but there is a lot of changes happening, a lot. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Rashid, and uh, uh, for, for explaining it to us. Now, um, um, uh, Matthias, from, from your point of view, I mean, uh, Deutsche Telekom, T-Mobile, big group as well. So what is your, what is your take on that, how the, well, what do we see around with it to, to, with regards to the future internet demand? So yeah, thanks a lot for having the chance to, to present my, uh, my insights here. And uh, thanks a lot, Eddie. I found a lot of our findings in your presentation as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe, maybe looking back before I get into that, uh, looking back what happened to the pandemic and just referring to one of the questions from Ian. Um, well, 
we saw quite an increase, but the increase was not as big as, for example, for Indonesia. So I do not know what the reason might be. So we saw a, a total increase of around 50 uh, 50 percent in traffic, and we're currently around 25 to 30 tera in our network in, in the AS3020 in the backbone we are having. Um, but um, so some of some of the services and this refers back to what Rashid said. For example, the service we are currently uh, communicating with Zoom. These kind of services they increased, I think, 300, 400, 500 percent. But in total, the increase was not as big as we thought. And I, when the whole pandemic started, and we heard from the first networks that uh, had some problems, uh, you can imagine that uh, our top management was a bit panicking. But we found out very early there was no need to panic. So it was went. I wouldn't say 100% smooth, but I would say 99% smooth. So we had a lot of uh, the, the the big traffic sources we had very well connected. So and uh, looking forward, so one element I think for especially for a wholesale unit is indeed um, find find the right position in this market. As Eddie showed in his presentation. Uh, well, we came to this similar conclusion that it's getting hard for us more or less to concentrate on transit only. So I think these these times, are, I don't want to say over, so there might be specialists out there. DT, we found that we are definitely no specialists for it. So we really concentrate on our core markets that is mainly here in Europe. Um, and uh, this is where we focus on and especially focus on more or less end user experience. That's definite what we're doing, but of course we want to we want to uh, get a bigger share of the cake. So we invested quite a lot into uh, this internet security products, DDoS defense, and it's growing very well. We had a huge demand in DDoS defense, uh, mainly coming from from German enterprises, as you can imagine, but from some players and carriers as well. That was growing very well through the pandemic, and this is where we continue to invest and and develop new products. Um, CDN business, we are partnering here, is running pretty well. We saw a huge increase uh, there as well through the pandemic. So that was the right decision more or less to, to get into that business a couple of years back. And what we now started to look at, and we saw that in Eddie's uh, presentation as well, can we make use of, for example, this um, new edge trend? So Deutsche Telekom has built some edge data center in Germany. We are trying to resell that now. It's a bit difficult on a wholesale basis, to be very honest. But uh, we serve internal groups as well. For example, our enterprise brand is systems. So they make use of it, um, which we are pretty happy of. Um, but there will, and this was one of the elements, and I think you would come to that when we talk about the future, is all about scale and flexibility. So. Um, we, of course, want that the traffic's getting in very efficiently. So ideally on many spots so that we do not need to transport the, the traffic all over Germany and to, to our affiliates in Europe. That's definitely one thing. I think the 400G interface will come pretty soon, more or less to connect the customers uh, on IP. I think in WDM, it's already there. And what we are currently investing quite some time in is, is, is kind of process optimization. And uh, another big thing we're working on is network functions exposure. But that's mainly on the 5G area so that we give access uh, via APIs to certain network functionality. And we think that's the wholesale model of the future, especially when we talk about low latency applications and these kind of things. Okay, th thank you. Um, Eddie, um, new technologies pushes us um, uh, and have a huge impact on, on, our, on our service portfolios. So can you, can, can you run us through so in how and in, in, in what way? Uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Eric. Yes, correct. The, uh, remember uh, during 4G, I think 4G, we, we don't imagine a 4G uh, impact to our, our life yes, during the uh, 4G rollout. But, but now as we have proven, it's also Rashid saying that now is uh, really fast moving uh, 4G, uh, our technology of 4G already uh, involved, already impact to all life. And then for 5G, they, everybody uh, waiting 5G. If 5G will be like 4G, uh, this is this maybe different country, different uh, uh, time, different year, they will implement the 5G. 
but certainly a technology driven still I, uh, in my opinion technology driven still will uh, come uh, so the the uh, the aspect of uh, life is uh, driven by technology and this is 5g and maybe that there is uh, iot uh, so this is uh, this is my my opinion yeah then uh, other other things is uh, as mentioned by matthias actually the uh, technology currently already based on network, network virtualization function or N nfv so this technology is based on the common hardware and it's like the it system it's just like server in the market and then application will be installed in the market in the in the hardware that uh, common hardware and then will be installed in any data center in, uh, and data center will move to the uh, closer to the user uh, Matthias in this edge data center so this uh, technology really will uh, impact to wholesale business uh, and the, the the we we are as telco uh, need to embrace this technology need to consider and to uh, what the appropriate in our, our area and also in my opinion as Telco currently is for the global telco or worldwide telco is uh, I think it's difficult to to be global telco uh, because global uh, traffic already occupied by OTT. So better as telco we focus on our area and we focus we have uh, advantage in technology and service and uh, giving customer experience in our area with. Uh, uh, as a leading uh, or preferred uh, telco in our area and then we we really uh, getting the the service and the customer in our area this, this is my opinion and then we move to a global and then uh, and this is not time like this <laughs> so uh, this is uh, my opinion regarding uh, the technology and how the telco react with technology. Thank, thank you, Eric. Thank you. Rashid, you want to complement this? Yeah, I'm mean, saying if, 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 if we go through the time scale, we've been very much focused on the network side. And one of the uh, I mean, reason, justification that the telecom was very much focused into the infrastructure network because we were trying to play the modulator between the user demand and the services or the content available at the somewhere, or even up trying to connect between the two, two customers being at the A or B at different location. But with the nice investment that the tech, telecom has put a lot of infrastructures on ground, a lot of kind of technologies that have been lifted up, we see this, as we mentioned, the transformation from being a network based company to more into the service base. Here we see that the, the intention of providing the services is the key that put a lot of investment on how we provide those services to the user more than being aware about how we can bring it. And now what we see, there is a lot of uh, a shift kind of investment. We see the, the cloud providers, we, we see the content providers, we see the solution providers are becoming more closer geographically to their user than they used to be before. So, and why is that is to be more, uh, I mean, uh, let's say, uh, cost-effective solution and the network utilization Number two, uh, customer experience. Uh, number three, uh, more closer to your to their to their uh, users uh, commercially, uh, technically, and this put the telecom in a way of how can we take this matter in a way to elaborate with those kind of things. So, uh, so now in Etisalat we are in a very much nice uh, position, collaborating with the CDNs, with the cloud providers, working together 
with the communities. Uh, now, uh, I think you all can see because of this transformation, the whole world or your users becoming like more into cyber communities. We see, we see gaming as, uh, as very much into uh, a scale of business that each one of us is paying attention to. It. We see the cloud business is becoming extreme, not only with the SMBs, we see users now. We see users are uh, very much into this business or into utilization of this business. Uh, we see the financial institutions, we see the education, the health, it's the, the whole world becoming into very much into cyber communities, which, uh, which somehow it, it forced us to def redefining our, our services in, in a community base to cater those kind of requirement. So uh, I agree, I agree with, uh, with uh, Eddie's statement. There is a lot of balancing happening now. And in the Salat, we are we came with uh, with a couple of loose initiatives. And the beauty in our region, by the way, uh, folks, I mean, we are not uh, working alone. Now there is a lot of collaboration happening and those collaboration, it is not among the telecom providers only. Uh, we, we, we work with the government, we work with the regulator because regulators with this kind of uh, cyber kind of communities, you need a new, a new definitions. You, know, you need a new, a new era of uh, kind of uh, regulation to cope with this uh, changes. So we are working with them very close and we, in, in our region, we see a good number of deployment happened recently uh, for our cloud providers. And those, uh, those kind of shift, uh, it helps to, to make a lot of changes in our uh, uh, service uh, type solutions to work with them as well uh, to find the right way of uh, catering those kind of demand is not only catering those kind of demand no it's also in the cost effective solution and I believe the moment that the 5G uh, rollout will be uh, at, at the at the big uh, the big size of uh, business scale we will be going through another stage of uh, acceleration. Uh, and this is, I, I see it, it will happen in no, no time. And uh, the, the centric kind of service user base, it will be, it will be, a, it will be having some kind of a new uh, look that we don't know how it will be look like. Uh, maybe we have some kind of a view, but we don't know exactly where we'll be there. There is a lot of changes happening in the network science, by the way. I mean, there is no doubt. I think Eddie is, is experiencing this. Uh, Matthias is experiencing this. Network, we spend a lot of network developing it to reach to that level with aspects. Now those aspects are not more there with the same way that it used to be. There is a new aspects came to the, our consideration. And, and the beauty of it that we are all in belief that loose aspects are real facts that we need to pay attention to. Uh, please, Eric, I'll give it back to thank, you. Thank you, Rashid. So, um, uh, Matthias, um, and Rashid was tipping on it already. So, so, from your point of view, and, and let's say within your group, um, how can operators and, and other telcos pre prepare themselves? I mean, um, uh, what are the key elements to, 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 to watch out for? And, and I mean, can you lead the way? Do, do you have any use cases uh, you can share with the audience? So I guess you, you, you're rather looking at more or less uh, how to develop new, new features or new business uh, businesses. Um, well, we believe it, you, we need to find a way to collaborate definitely with the hyperscalers. Currently, I think, you know, when we look at all the traffic, it's, it's all video. Yeah, when I look at my top 10 uh, traffic pushers, I guess that all stems from from video in the end, right? So, what's the new video, and uh, uh, in the future? So, will it come from from cloud gaming, as uh, Rashid already mentioned? Um, I, I I think there's quite some truth in it. Probably will be the new thing, but some other services might pop up. The only question what we are currently having is, you know, what will be then in the end uh, the role of 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 these big hyperscalers and um, 
you know, you can call us a bit paranoid, but we don't like uh, third party caches or third party engines in, in, in deep in our network because we simply don't want to have these kind of black boxes where we do not know what's going to happen. So we want to have control on it. Um, so we need, even for these kind of things, especially when we talk about these low latency uh, applications that might come up, uh, we don't, we just don't want to be a, the dumb pipe, you know, that we open our data centers, let the guys in and, you know, see what they're doing. And uh, we only have more or less the, 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 the last mile that we can monetize something like that. So of course we want to participate. We have a lot of partnerships um, with the hyperscalers, especially around uh, the cloud services. So we, we, we are reselling clouds, we are reselling the services. Um, so we bundle it together with, with our services, but this is more happening on the enterprise side, not on the wholesale side. On the wholesale side, we see us really as an enabler of these kind of businesses. So for example, when you look at the and uh, everything that's going on on the sd van it's mainly enterprise, what we are doing with my job will be, and, and the job of, of the wholesale will be the, the underlay, building the, the uh, underlay infrastructure, find the right partners in the different countries, connect them with a high quality network. A very important thing, and this is, we, we talked about localizing of the traffic. So, you know, this, this big international wholesalers and uh, Eddie gave the example, uh, sad example of GTT. Um, the traffic's getting more and more localized, you know, with this kind of low latency infrastructure with the edge compute, it's getting even more localized. It's not only you build one hub, for example, in Germany, Frankfurt alone, and you can cover everything and everything is fine. Um, you most probably do not need to have 2000 locations. Germany is not that big, but you, you definitely need to get closer to the end user. And if you have different services from different players, you need to find kind of local interconnects. And so we will find this more this, this peering and these interconnects on a more local level. And today, and probably we need to even find differentiated uh, models of interconnected. So um, to make sure that a video traffic is not pushing aside uh, low latency critical um, traffic, for example, for an ambulance or something like that. So this is this is what we need to look at and where we need to find ways so that we kind of separate more or less enterprise traffic or critical traffic from pure video. That's one thing. And then we only think it's it can go in, in a kind of a cooperation, competition, however you want to name it. And definitely not against. So I think the telcos are not in the role, more or less, to dictate more or less the service models. No, absolutely. Um, uh, Eddie, um, you you want to um, articulate on uh, on this one a little bit? Do you agree with uh, with, with Matthias, or do you see more? Eddie, your Oh, sorry, still mute. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we uh, really agree with uh, Matthias and Rashid uh, opinion because we are from incumbent operator. We we have to uh, we we have a big huge uh, customer. We need to to make this customers is useful for for us. Yeah, uh, to to negotiate with the OTT and and. Uh, content or CDN player. Uh, however, to ne negotiate with OTT or CDN, they, they ask about the uh, data center. Uh, if you have data center, you have good data center like this. So, so uh, our strategy now is uh, to make the data center is uh, with uh, telco uh, OTT standard and uh, to have the neutral data center. Uh, this this actually this sense of neutrality of uh, telco is a question mark but we try to make the neutral data center so uh, ott and then uh, cdn player can uh, hosting in the data center in our data center and then then this is a uh, uh, improve our experience to customer improve the what uh, Matthias say latency and then uh, also video, video efficient tra uh, deliver video traffic. And other hand, we 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 monetize to OTT and CDN by the hosting to our data center. This is a uh, one of our strategy. Thanks, Eric. Thank you very much. So, um, uh, Rashid. Um, 
talking about what we need to do, what what we see, what we need to do, and and how 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 can we prepare each other. Uh, 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 what are your predictions for for 2021 and maybe for 2022? What 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 will we see? What can we expect? Even with well, as you mentioned, the speed of light we're going uh, <laughs> today, but uh, do 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 you have let's say um, um, from a helicopter point of view? Uh, can you can you structure a little bit and, and maybe can you you can share it with us what what you see uh, what you see coming from let's say the the the, the short term future and, and and maybe even then next year. Okay. Uh, see, Eric, this this question is one of the very much uh, difficult question among all the organization I believe because the speed that it, it takes it's too. Uh, too fast to be captured. Yeah. But one thing that I want to share it among all of you that I'm optimistic because I think we reach to a level where it, somehow it could be a cons considered as a peak during our previous business cycle compared with the technology that we used to do for the last uh, seven to 10 years. And we need a change. And this change changes was trying for the right venue to, pay, to take off. And this is exactly what happened last year. Now, what is my projection for 2021? Uh, as you can see that at even the time scale ran so fast. We are in June of 2020 fast, 2021. So how, how, how we can imagine that six months has passed such quick that it's like this for all of us. Now, the, my, my, my main driver behind the optimist is, is the, uh, as I mentioned, the hyperscaler. They just take off into a new era. And this a new era, they will not be able to escalate it further without the coordination and cooperation with us. And even us as a telecom provider or incumbent even, if we will try to stay individual, trying to do everything by ourselves, I'm not saying that we will not be able to do it, but we, we will not be able to guarantee to reach to the same level they reached. So the right strategy here is to work together and to share, I don't call it the big pie. I, call it as an opportunity to grow this, the whole community to a level where they can really enjoy the telecommunication services and the cyber kind of uh, solutions. Now, there is a lot of demand in terms of uh, how we can speed up the matter, how we can have a cloud kind based services and a new uh, storage uh, commercial aspect we are in it a lot. We, we noticed this very much in, in, in a couple of years ago. And we developed a good number of a partnership agreements. And those partnership agreements, I believe, it gives a great venue to calibrate all those uh, segments. Uh, I mean, being a telecom, being a hyperscale in the CDN or a hyperscale in the cloud service or security or even uh, solution based uh, where we can work together without looking at the user kind of, uh, I mean, uh, financial aspect. No, we, we, we look how we can lift the service to a level that can secure a good solution fast with enough capacity and with less kind of commercial commitment. And this is something which I believe it's happening now. Uh, so I believe uh, being uh, from a wholesale, I always feel happy when I see the utilization is high. So I think the utilization will keep going up. I always uh, uh, feel happy when I see the number of service order form is increasing regarding the value. The values, of course, among all of us is going down because the service is becoming more cheaper uh, since it is more into a service solution wise rather than the network. But, but I think the number of requirements is coming more and more. The utilization is getting uh, uh, bigger 
uh, higher. Of course, the pressure on the international utilization is becoming slowly in a percentage wise less, but we see somehow there is a kind of stability now. Uh, in, in our region, there is a lot of uh, localization of traffic as that is happening, uh, dry, uh, driven by the, the, the huge demand. And we are trying to facilitate this by building, uh, building uh, data centers, uh, helping others also to build their own data centers by enhancing the infrastructure and connectivity. Uh, as Eddie, he mentioned something which is very nice is having a new interconnection hubs, which is happening a lot. Uh, the number of data centers that we build and we invested in for the last two years, it's almost equal for the number of data centers that we have done uh, for uh, almost seven years. Uh, and so, so, so uh, there is, I, I have to be optimistic here. Um, we are trying to lead this trend very much. Uh, of course, not individual. We are very much in talk with uh, with our customers, with our partners, with the the new uh, driven based technology, uh, an aspect of all the communities. Uh, so I think I think things will be uh, better. But again, if we will stay doing like what we used to do before, just looking at our infrastructure just looking at our physical kind of components, I think we might be end with what has been end with other companies that bankrupt. And I'm, I really feel bad to say bankrupt because the fast that is happening now, it force us to go to this a new digitalization, a new kind of a solution Base a new of collaboration with with those hyperscaler kind of investment uh, or services that they are doing it. So to be to be able to be part of this big game that is happening. Now, when I'm saying game, I'm not saying in a in a in a, a negative way. No, but I'm saying in a positive way that there is a lot of changes taking us to a new era, and we need to be part of this. Okay, thank you, thank you, Rashid. Uh, Matthias, what, what are your predictions for the near future? Well, time is running. Uh, I might try to make it really short. I think wholesale will look completely different than it uh, was 10, 10 to 15 years ago. We see with this low uh, latency critical uh, application, especially uh, specifically coming around more or less 5G, that roaming will needs to completely change. Uh, it, it's, uh, you know, home routing, from my point of view, will be dead very soon. Um, the, I think we, we will rather need to get into kind of an enabler role, at least for IP, might be completely different, for example, for voice um, or for the infrastructure business, uh, but for IP will definitely be a lot of enabling. So uh, enabling own units and getting into a kind of new holes and models that doesn't need to be carrier to carrier, but in a kind of a B2B to X model where we will be more or less the enabler for completely new business model based on our network infrastructure. This is how I would see it. Thank you, thank you, Matthias. Eddie, um, some famous last words on the uh, on the on the predictions for the near future <laughs> from Tim Insight. Okay, thank, thank you, Eric. Oh, COVID nineteen is uh, maybe traffic still growing in this year or next year. Yeah. So uh, we en we enjoy the traffic uh, growth but actually not enjoying the COVID-19, but enjoying the traffic growth. Uh, and so we have uh, revenue, we have uh, net income, like Tallinn in 2020 is uh, uh, the, the best uh, performance in, in uh, during Tallinn uh, since Tallinn Wheel. Yeah? Uh, so because, uh, because we have a very good performance, no? uh, revenue, net income, so we have opportunity to develop ourselves. We have opportunity to to enhance our service, our as Rashid said, not focus only in network, but also in the service, also in the solution. Also, we need to uh, cooperate to partnership with uh, other players. Oh, so uh, this is uh, the I think the we have the success uh, gun this year. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, those are some some very very, very nice words. Thank you very much. So, um, ladies and gentlemen out there, um, it has been a very inspiring um, uh, round here um, with uh, with uh, with esteemed uh, gentlemen. Um, uh, it, it seems that we come to to an end of this uh, this uh, this session. And uh, especially, I would like to thank uh, Eddie Siswanto for uh, from Tillin for for having the keynote, being the keynote speaker here, and uh, and 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 take us away and uh, and share with us uh, the, the Tillin insights. I would like to um, uh, thank, of course, Tillin as uh, as a sponsor of the session, and uh, uh, my dear, dear, dear thanks go uh, go to to Mr. Rashid and uh, Mr. Matthias. From Eti Salat and from uh, from Deutsche Telekom. So, um, uh, gentlemen, thank you very much for for being on this panel. And uh, and I would like to give uh, give the word now to uh, back to the studio in Berlin to 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 Laura and uh, stay tuned with us, guys, because we have a lot to, to to tell you and a lot to share with you. So, Laura, over to you. And gentlemen, thank you very much. And audience, thank, see you. You soon. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. It's nice. Thank you, Eric. They are all we at the end of this webinar session, and I would like to thank our keynote speaker, Edith, for his interesting presentation, our panelists for joining and sharing their knowledge, and our audience for participating and listening. This panel will be soon available, available to watch on our CC Media portal. We are looking forward in welcoming you in both physical and virtual events this year. For more information, please visit our events portal. If you're interested in supporting and sponsoring one of our future branded webinars, contact CC team. For all updates and fresh content, follow us on our four social media channels. Also, subscribe to our Telegram news channel to receive exclusive invitations to our CC webinar live sessions. That's all for today. Goodbye and stay healthy and safe.